All right, welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man, and what you're about to see is footage uh, from the Farm Machinery Show, the second part of the footage. I shot about four hours worth of footage, and I've whittled it down to two videos. So, yeah, that's what you're going to see. And in this one, there's some Oliver stuff. So enjoy that, and we'll look at it right after this. and Gale, which I don't believe makes any agricultural equipment anymore. TYM tractors. Yetter, Yetter poly twisters. That's probably the most popular poly closing wheel right now. Case IH. <laughs> Farmall Super Am. That's kind of neat. The return of a classic. Toy store over there. Ferrari. I get one of those to go with my Fiat's. Look at that cute little thing. Made in Italy. Italy. Mitos. That's what I've got on my 1650 loader tractor. I've been very, very happy with them. They have a super deep lug. Every time people see those on there, I mean, these aren't even really quite as deep as what those ones are that I have. Probably a different model. An old versatile. Titan tire. There's the liquid tube, that guy that talked to me earlier. Good. Some of the J and M stuff, monstrous stuff now. Tracks. Check out that. Maybe isn't as dramatic on the camera, but in person, that's quite the slope. Oh, 
up here is something we got to look at because it's our color. One thing I noticed when I saw the pictures was I don't recall that the ones that were red from the factory still had the holes for the name spear, but maybe they did. It would make sense that they wouldn't make a special panel, or, but it would be a matter of not putting it through a process, so it's very possible. Although that could be different sheet metal too. But it does appear this one has been red since it was born. You cold? Yep, I got a purple one. Early one too, because it's a 3150. A real 86. So we have a video of that because there's been times I've needed something like that fixed. Made for the fireman. Oh my, got over here to this half, we'll see if we can find some more Oliver stuff. The nice thing is most everything is in the same place every year, so like last year that E-Parts place is the place we found that top link for that 2020 deer and I sent away for it and it's on there right now. So. That was something I bought as a result of this. I got everything now. Injection lines, cylinders. There's our top link. Hey. How you doing? Good. That's good. <laughs> Not really. I was last year I saw something here and then bought it because of seeing your stuff here. So. Did you? So your booth is working, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, I so. love it. Anyway, Thank you much. No problem. Yeah. I've got a, videos on uh, YouTube. I've got a YouTube channel, so okay. Not huge. Where's your uh, place based out of? Really, I can't remember. I remember We're based Cinema. out of South Dakota. Okay, I remember that. Now I think I, I knew it was out west somewhere, but yep, yep, southeast South Dakota. So this is quite the trek for you to come out here, really. This but. is quite the trek. <laughs> It's but this is the all of this stuff. But this is the place to be if you want to sell it, because man, yeah. if they don't if they don't make it, it's probably not here, you know. So. Yep, that's very true. Well, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Yep. There's some familiar green coming up right there. There we go. Hey. There's our fittings like we put in the 1855. I brought an FFA group today, so they're wandering around. But anything new to add to the record of anything? I mean, if you want to say anything on YouTube, you can say. I'm gonna say, hey. Yeah. <laughs> You're at the Show. Yeah. Celebrating 20 years for Oliver Heritage. There you go. Uh, we got, I don't, I'm not wearing one right now, but we do have t-shirts. There we go. Anniversary on them. 
That's hard to believe. We have a tracker in here. We have a tracker. I saw that on Facebook that <laughs> that was coming. Cool. Yeah. Make sure they bring in the other half. Oh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> see the back half. Half at a time. Oh my. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, usually I go on Wednesday, and I think it's a lot more crowded today than it is I on, think so too. on a Wednesday. Yeah. But. I don't know. About they said like 10 o'clock tonight. It's supposed to really be bad. About the time we go back after the tractor pull, probably. Yeah. Hurry up and get the pull done on time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll walk around and look at everything. Yeah. You gotta ask who about that. Is there anything you want to say on YouTube about what you've got here? I saw your post on Facebook with the half a tractor. This is most likely the first Cummins conversion that's ever been in a fully CNC machine installation. We've uh, probably be doing quite a few of these in the future. We've got before, how did you do it before? It was just all cast pieces and... Well, the, all four corners were primarily weld together mount kits and line the ends and kind of weld them together. And in the case of the walk shot top, we plans to cut the grain the old mounds out. Now we put them, uh, put it in a big fixture in the CNC machine and make it look nice. Yeah, yeah. make it look nice, make it a lot easier. And uh, you know, then you can machine repeatable mounts and bolt it in place. And yeah, it just lines up the way it ought. That's what I always said I liked about like the way you did it was factory holes. It doesn't, I mean, you see a lot of Cummins conversions, but nine times out of ten yours you wouldn't be able to unless you knew you wouldn't know that it had been repowered because it looks just like it's supposed to so yeah the, it's all in the details yeah you know, don't, it's very very rare that i've ever cut a hole in the hood to do this and I know people ask all the time, but you sell the kits and you'll do it too if they want to get yeah. you the tractor somehow. We we'll sell you one part for the job or drop the tractor off and pick it back up. Ready to go, either way. How many do you think you've done in your life? I don't know. I first one was about <laughs> 25 years ago. Never thought to keep track of it, but I've probably, uh, probably done over 100 in house. and. Wow. As far as selling kits, several times. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we ship chip kits and partial kits, full kits, all over the place. And then you've been making these canopies too, right? And, yeah, we've been making them for a few years. Now. And then yours are, what I liked about yours is you can get the narrower widths, can't you? Yeah. Because of the way you've made the... The posts are in the same spot. Uh, it's just the mounting foot's different. There was two different original versions. There was an assembly line installed version, and there was a perch department version. Just the difference is the, the shape of the, the foot where mm -hmm. the foot's going around the axle housing. I only know, like in my area, probably of one factory canopy, so they were not a big seller yeah. around here, or yeah. maybe at all. Really in... not at all. There was doesn't seem like there was a certain area of the country that had a, no. an abundance of it, but hmm. no, it's, I mean, we very carefully measured everything about a factory canopy and just did it again. So, All right, well. Uh, yeah, it's the first year here. Sherry was generous enough to offer us half of space. <laughs> Yeah, that works out pretty good. Put this together in about a month's time. <laughs> got it loaded in the trailer about five hours before we needed to leave. So. It's got the steps. I don't know how many of those I put on. I really like those. Yeah. The 2255 style steps, you know, gives yeah. you a little bit extra. Yeah, but your, yours are heavier than the yeah. factory ones, yeah, which I the, like too. Yeah, the, the caterpillars always shook the other ones apart. We uh, really made everything heavier about it. Uh, on the other side of this one, we have our... Like the 2105 style almost, or the well, Americans, I guess you'd say. That's kind of a reproduction of the 2135 Series 3 box. Okay. That has a different lid on it to fit the Oliver better. And we added the holes to it to bolt it to an Oliver frame. So it'll fit a, quite a variety of tractors. <laughs> 
Yeah. And if you need more steps, uh, you just bolt another Keep one. Keep bolting another one yeah. on, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like factory looking stuff more yeah. than just some of the aftermarket kits. Sure, it's easier to get on, but they just look goofy on yeah, there. So you sometimes know. Sometimes you got to make sure you don't eat an extra cheeseburger before you step on. Oh, the I know, because they're pretty flimsy when yeah. you look at them. That's why you can get them for hundred and thirty dollars. You know, <laughs> shipped to you. So that yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> well, good to talk to you, yeah, and same. I'm sure we'll cross paths again at some point. So Sounds good. yep. Thank you. Yep. See ya. Try to get around here, but there's actually over here the Iron Bull canopy people, and they make another version of that uh, ROPS for the different tractors, but they make them for all brands, different styles. Different <laughs> color? Nice. those for the GoPro. <laughs> Look at that cute little thing. heaters must be this year's hot thing literally hot thing i've seen them in several places Ross. hey what are we doing pal drive all the way down here to see somebody from home yeah exactly yeah. exactly what are you cover up crops. to down at cover crops huh well you want to give your your little talk for the internet anything you want to say about to the to the talk to our local dealer oh the local dealer oh my well you got options it looks like so custom win everything and uh 120 different varieties tim's uh here to help you out with your mixes and there we go there we go Jackhammer radish. I don't think I, is that the tillage radish? That is that is what they call radish. it? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was a mixes. And there we go. So, do you also do like we do custom blades. like just cover crops, or do you do like pasture yep, mixes and fruit. stuff yep. like that? Yeah, we got yep, a bunch of What's the orchard grasses, temp grasses, fescues, all that? So, stuff. what's the go-to mix for our home? Climate, would you say? For, beef uh, for, beef? for southern Indiana, for beef, yeah. It's called beef master. Oh, you got her. That's pretty cool. Got it bagged up just for what we want. I'm gonna take one of your little books here, cause oh, uh, sure. yeah. And you ain't got my number anymore either. Have you? Mm, if you changed it, probably not. So write it on there or something. Actually, or you, you got a, now. you got a. We are fancy now. We got, man. Triple T Ag Solutions. Good deal. All right. I was just thinking that the other day, pasture mix. And uh, I thought I might have to break down and talk to the county agent, but luckily I saw you first. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's where it's at. He's cut through, the cut through the red tape and the environmental. Yeah. Good deal. Well, good to see you. I'll read through your book and Alrighty. figure out what I can't live without. Thank you. So we have a little mess, but tomorrow we will have them do that. Oh my. Premier Energy. That is our local co-op, which has merged with so many different things over the last few years that now they, I guess, advertise down here because the territory comes this far. Thought it'd be nice to try to get some stuff we didn't get last year. Uh, there's an upstairs that has like toys and stuff and then there's a hallway that has a toy display but I'm not exactly sure how I get there from here Copperhead Ag if we go to the other end of this 
there's another hall that has like uh that's usually where shoop is at but i don't know don't know if i'm smart enough to figure it out i've also got to keep track of my time seeing as how i am the ride for the rest of my passengers so i should probably be paying attention so i don't do something dumb there's the booth where i bought that neon sign from last year and they told me they were going out of business so that's a handy way to make a sale camera guided cultivator how about that from our first cultivators. We've got a squeeze chute. They got a concave for a 55 John Deere? I doubt it. Show specials, 10% off and free freight. I usually buy something every year, but I don't know. Don't really want to lug all this around <laughs> with me. I was gonna say the store lock moved, but they just added more space here because they've got some over here and in the other room. And This is the place. If it's not here, it can't be had. I mean, every type of tool or implement, I should say, that you could imagine, piece of machinery in the agricultural realm, I should say. I know there's construction and truck shows that are just as big or bigger, but. attach adapters that's a project I want to do on my loader sometime I found a company that makes one that bolts right on to a Schwartz loader like that is so just got to make that happen food court
more food court. Last year we didn't go down this way, but we're going to now. His grandpa would call this the women's area. So, but it's just like a flea market. knives. I love the show Forged in Fire, so that's a lot of what they do on there. Different patterns. Well, that's like some kind of wizardry there. That fish just coming out of the nowhere. That's something. I wonder how that works. I guess it's a fan and it somehow projects picture onto it. That's weird.
So to wrap this up, I guess I should show you the stuff that I bought while I was there. And uh, nothing spectacular, but some things I just couldn't pass up here. So we'll start with this one. I have the big reveal here, see? <laughs> I thought this was the neatest little thing. It's exactly like our John Deere wagon that I have outside. And they only wanted $25. And I thought that seemed like an excellent price. So it came home with me and uh, yeah. So there's that. I might even have to find some plastic horses or something that size. I don't even know what scale that really is. I think it's probably bigger than 1 16th scale, but I don't know if it would say underneath. Sometimes they're stamped. Yeah, not important. The other thing I bought was this another thing that i thought was quite the bargain as it was 35 dollars it has a broken fender and that's the worst part about it but the grill can be had i'm not sure if that's the correct wheels for it i think it is on the non on the one with the little guy but uh Anyway, I can have that grill easy. And uh, the parts, toy parts place already has it. So if I get that coming, and then maybe I will order a fender for one of the later ones, and maybe I can cut it and splice it somehow to make it where it looks like it's got a fender the right way. But overall, I thought this was in excellent shape for 
you know, what it is. If it just didn't have a broken fender. But, yeah. So there you go. Great grandpa pulling his box bed wagon with a 77. So anyway, I thought that the uh, show was a success, especially since it didn't cost me anything to go. And uh, we went to the tractor pull. That was fun. Other than the fact that those seats, it's like sitting on top of one, one another. I mean, they're <laughs> it's pretty tight in there, especially if you're a big person like me. Uh, I will put in a clip of this, uh, which I thought was neat. Take a look at this. Two red, two red and one blue tractor as we turn things over to Leslie Mears, who looks over the number one spot. So this guy was flying this little blimp thing around and every so often it would drop some type of little prize like it he would load it up with a bunch of stuff on this balcony and then as it fly over the crowd it would drop one thing at a time I don't know what they were if they were earplugs condoms I don't know but neat nonetheless that he was able to fly that in there and he could fly it up into the crowd and it would look like it was coming up at you and then you know he never did crash in anything, so, and he went pretty well way up to the top, is what I'm saying, so, anyway, it was, it was neat, I, I don't know that you're allowed to take video of the stuff, I know people do, but I wasn't going to sit there and film the whole thing and get us kicked out, so, that's how that was, uh, also, if you ever do go in there, don't forget earplugs for when they pull the trucks, because when those V8 motors hit about 4,500 RPM or better, you know, it starts getting real loud. And then when they hit the red line, your ears are burning. So in that concrete building with all that echo, uh, yeah, you need earplugs. So don't forget that. But anyway, another successful trip down there. And hopefully we'll get to go do it again next year. So, yeah. As always, if you enjoy my videos, give them a thumbs up. That helps out the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Leave a comment. Tell me that you liked it or tell me that you hated it. Tell me I'm a moron. I really don't care, but anything that you say helps us out too. So thank you again, as always, for watching, and I will see you in the next one.